Hey everyone, this is my first video on this channel of Biochemistry Tutor and I really hope you will enjoy learning biochemistry through my channel. So today I'm going to talk about nucleic acids, nucleosides and nucleotides. So nucleic acids which you have already heard about, uh, there are basically two types of nucleic acids. One is called deoxyribonucleic acid that is DNA and second is ribonucleic acid which is called RNA. So D uh, DNA is a double stranded molecule which forms an alpha helix whereas RNA is a single, strand, uh, sand, single stranded molecule. Now DNA is mostly located in the nucleus most importantly in eukaryotes and RNA is located outside the nucleus. Now DNA is important in storing genetic information and it's kind of like it, it acts like a cellular library whereas RNA is important for transferring genetic information and as well as in protein synthesis. So basically um, the genetic information flows from DNA to RNA to proteins. Um, that means DNA is transcribed into RNA and then RNA is eventually translated into protein synthesis. So both DNA and RNA are polymers and polymers are nothing but they are basically just a long repeating units of monomers and in this structure these monomers are carbon, hydrogen and oxygen atoms. Now when it comes to both DNA and RNA, these monomers are called nucleotides and nucleotide which makes up DNA is called deoxynucleotide which contains a deoxyribose sugar molecule uh, which is a pentose ring, a 5 carbon ring and it also contains a nitrogenous base which is attached to carbon 1 position of the pentose ring and it also contains a phosphate group which is attached to carbon 5 position of the pentose ring which is located outside the um, pentose ring. Now the nucleotide which makes up RNA is called ribonucleotide and it contains a ribose sugar which is again a pentose ring and it also contains a nitrogenous base which is attached to carbon 1 position and a phosphate ring which is attached to carbon 5 position of the sugar molecule. So the difference between these two sugar molecules that is ribose and deoxyribose is um, ribose sugar has two hydroxyl group which is attached to carbon 2 and carbon 3 position of the pentose ring whereas Deoxyribose has only one hydroxyl group which is missing a hydroxyl group uh, at carbon 2 position and therefore it is called deoxyribose because it is missing a hydroxyl group here uh, on carbon 2 position. So basically nucleotides contain a sugar molecule, a nitrogenous base and a phosphate group. So now uh, let's look more, uh, let's look at more detail about a nitrogenous base. So there are basically uh, two types of nitrogenous base. One is called purines, which is a double member, a double ring. One is six carbon ring and another is five carbon ring. Now, the, uh, the second uh, nitrogenous base is called pyrimidines and which is uh, only a six carbon ring. So that is therefore it is a single ring. Now the way to remember uh, whether purine has a double ring or pyrimidine has a single ring there is one way to remember is because purine it has a shorter name but it has a larger structure. At the same time with pyrimidines it has a larger name but it has a shorter structure. So this is kind of very a uh, nice way to remember, one way to remember that you know purine has a shorter name but has a larger structure because it has a 6 carbon ring and a 5 carbon ring 
whereas pyrimidine has a larger name and the shorter structure. Now, the other thing about purines and pyrimidines are the six uh, atom ring or the six carbon ring in purines are numbered anti-clockwise manner, whereas six carbon ring in pyrimidines are numbered uh, clockwise manner. Now, purines uh, includes adenine and guanine, whereas pyrimidines are thiamine, uh, uracil, and cytosine. So DNA contains um, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thiamine, whereas RNA contains adenine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil. So the difference between two is only DNA has a thymine, whereas RNA has a uracil. Um, so that is that. So that is the m important difference which everyone, I guess, needs to remember. So now let's talk about a uh, little bit in detail about purines and pyrimidines. So purines. Uh, like I suggest, it has a shorter name and a larger structure. So the basic structure of purines, uh, as you can see here, it has one six-membered carbon ring and uh, second is five-membered carbon ring. So if you remember, the six-carbon six ring of purine is numbered uh, anti-clockwise manner. So let's number this ring. So on first position, we have a nitrogen group attached and there is also another second nitrogen group, uh, nitrogen atom, which is, uh, which is on third position. So that means on the six member carbon ring, there are two nitrogen atom and four carbon atoms. Now on the, on the five carbon ring, the 5 carbon ring also has two nitrogen atoms which is at position 7 and position 9. So here there is a hydrogen atom attached to nitrogen uh, and where there is no hydrogen that means uh, that means there is a lone pair electron uh, of nitrogen. Now it also has a double bond between position 2 and 3. Uh, position 4 and 5 and position 7 and 8. So this is the basic structure of purines. So this is guanine which is also the same basic structure of purines. Now, now let's look at the difference between uh, adenine and guanine. So the one uh, one difference is there is an additional double bond in adenine between position 1 and uh, carbon 6. Now there is a NH2 group which is attached to carbon 6 position of adenine whereas in guanine there is a NH2 group which is attached to carbon 2 position of uh, 6 carbon ring in guanine. And the, another important difference in guanine is there is a carbonyl group which is attached to carbon 6 position of 6 member, uh, six member ring. So, so this is the structure of adenine and guanine. So now when the sugar molecule is attached to adenine or suppose guanine, uh, it is important to remember that sugar molecule can be only attached to position 9 uh, of the 5 member ring where is, which is called N9 position that is the uh, 9 position of nitrogen atom in purine ring. So this is very important guys you need to remember that the sugar molecule can be only attached on uh, N9 position in purine ring. So when, and then the important thing is when the sugar molecule is attached to adenine, it is called adenosine. Similarly, when the sugar molecule is attached to a guanine at N9 position of nitrogen atom, it is called guanosine. And both this uh, uh, attachment of sugar to adenine or guanine um, 
are called nucleosides so nucleosides basically they are just a sugar molecule which is attached to nitrogenous base so this is nitrogenous base and then when you add another uh, sugar molecule it becomes nucleoside and most importantly i'm emphasizing again that it is uh, sugar molecule is attached at n9 position um, of the purine ring now lastly when the phosphate group is attached to the sugar molecule it becomes adenylate and it is uh, and in this structure like i uh, like i showed before that uh, the the combination of a phosphate group and a sugar molecule and a nitrogenous base is called nucleotide so again when the sugar mole when the phosphate group is attached to nucleoside it becomes nucleotide so so here in this case it is called adenylate but alternatively you could also called like you can also name this nucleoside uh, and which can be called adenosine because this is adenosine uh, this is the basic structure of adenosine and the phosphate group is attached to carbon 5 position of the sugar molecule therefore it is called 5 prime monophosphate so therefore it is called adenosine 5 monophosphate that is amp and and if there is two phosphate group attached to uh, the sugar it will it, it it will be called adenosine diphosphate if there are three phosphate it will be called adenosine triphosphate that means adp or atp now now, now similarly when the phosphate group is attached to adenos uh, sorry gonosine it is called gonylate and alternatively it is also called gonosine 5 monophosphate so again just to clarify this is our nitrogenous base and when the sugar molecule is attached to nitrogenous base it becomes nucleoside and when new when, and when the phosphate group is attached to nucleoside it eventually becomes nucleotide so this is very important guys to remember now let's look into pyrimidines so like i said pyrimidine has a longer name but a shorter structure so pyrimidine contains a six carbon ring and uh, let's uh, look into the basic structure of all three pyrimidines those are um, thymine cytosine and uracil so so if you remember the the six member ring of the of pyrimidine is numbered clockwise manner so let's number this ring so this is the carbon one position where nitrogen atom is attached uh, carbon two and there is another nitrogen atom at carbon three position and four five six so basically there are two nitrogen uh, um, nitrogen atoms and four uh, carbon atoms in pyrimidine ring and there is a double bond between carbon five and carbon six so this is the basic structure two nitrogen atoms and one double bond between carbon five and six so now let's look at the difference between these three thymine cytosine and uracil so the one common uh, one common group which is attached to carbon 2 position is the carbonyl group so carbonyl group is attached to car uh, carbon 2 position in all uh, in all three pyrimidines that is thymine cytosine and uracil now the difference is there is a hydrogen group uh, hydrogen atom on uh, thymine and uracil on position 3 and the other difference is there is a double bond between position 3 and 4 of cytosine and most importantly there is a carbonyl group on thymine and uracil on position 4 so this both thymine and uracil they look very similar at this point they are very similar the only difference is um, that there is a methyl group attached to carbon 5 on thymine whereas there is no methyl group on uracil um, 
in carbon 5 position. So this is the only difference between thymine and uracil. And with cytosine, there is a NH2 group which is, which is attached to carbon 4 position. Again, uh, this is not very important to remember the structure of purines or pyrimidines. Uh, so you don't really need to follow this. But most important thing to follow is the transformation of nitrogen base to nucleoside to nucleotide. So let's, let's see how nitrogen base is now transformed into nucleoside. So like we saw before that nucleosides are basically uh, attachment of sugar molecule to the nitrogenous base. So when the sugar molecule is attached to nitrogen base, the important thing to remember here, unlike uh, purines, that the sugar molecule is attached to N1 position of uh, pyrimidine ring that is the N1, uh, that is the position 1 of nitrogen atom in 6 member ring. So when the sugar molecule is attached to thiamine, it becomes thymidine and that is its nucleoside. It becomes thymidine and that is its nucleoside. Now when it is attached, when the sugar molecule is attached to cytosine, it becomes cytidine. Now when the sugar molecule is attached to uracil, it becomes uridine. And lastly, when the phosphate group is attached to nucleoside, it becomes nucleotide and when the phosphate group is attached to thymidine, it becomes thymidylate and alternatively it is also called as um, thymidine 5-monophosphate, therefore it is also called as TMP and in case of cytidine it becomes cytidylate and uh, cytidine 5-monophosphate that is CMP. And when the phosphate group is attached to uridine, it becomes uridylate uh, and it is also called as uridine 5-monophosphate, that is UMP. So again, the transformation from nitrogen base to nucleoside to nucleotide is important to remember here. So just to quick, uh, just a quick revision. Um, so DNA, uh, like we saw DNA is a double-stranded molecule whereas RNA is a single-stranded. DNA is deoxyribose sugar. It is deoxyribose sugar because it lacks hydroxyl group on position 2 uh, of carbon atoms and uh, ribose sugar which has 2 hydroxyl group. Now DNA is located inside the nucleus whereas RNA is located outside the nucleus. DNA is important in storing genetic information whereas RNA is important in transferring genetic information as well as important in protein synthesis. Now DNA, in RN DNA and RNA are made up of nucleotides and these nucleotides um, contains a phosphate group, a sugar molecule and a nitrogenous base. And furthermore, this nitrogenous base, there are two forms of nitrogenous base. One is purine and pyrimidines. Purines are double member, uh, double ring. Uh, and and like, I sh like I said before, purines are shorter name and longer structure. Pyrimidines, longer name and shorter structure, that is six member ring. And um, that means it's a single ring. Purines contain adenine and guanine whereas pyrimidines contain cytosine, thymine, and uracil. And just to quickly revise, there are different forms of nitrogenous base, which we already saw, um, adenine. And uh, when the sugar molecule is attached to nitrogenous base, it becomes nucleoside, that is adenosine. And when the phosphate group is attached to nucleoside, it becomes nucleotide, that is adenylate or adenosine monophosphate. So for guanine, when the phosphate sugar sugar molecule is attached, it becomes guanosine, and uh, when the phosphate group is attached to guanosine, it becomes guan guanylate or guanosine monophosphate. For cytosine, it is cytidine when the sugar molecule is attached, whereas when the phosphate group is attached, it becomes cytidylate or cytosine 5 monophosphate and for thymine when the sugar molecule is attached it becomes thymidine 
and uh, when the phosphate group is attached to thymidine it becomes thymidylate or thymidine 5 monophosphate and lastly uracil when the sugar molecule is attached it becomes uridine and when the phosphate group is attached it becomes uridylate or uridine 5 monophosphate so so thank you so much for watching guys and uh, please like and subscribe if you uh, if you learn something from this lesson and uh, uh, i'll see you in the next lesson thank you so much for watching